Good evening and welcome to the America F1 series. This is the Division 1 event here at Austria. Round 5 of the championship of this 11 round season. And we are at the Red Bull Ring, which is very much a driver's favourite. Could we expect to see some great on-track action like we have seen over the course of the season? Could we maybe see a new winner take to the top step? So just see for your information, it'll be an 18 minute qualifying session to determine the grid and then a 36 lap Austrian Grand Prix to follow. So if you have just joined us, we do welcome you. Feel free to get involved in the conversation as well. Team House 1999 coming and saying, hey, Tom, race Division 2. Yes, they can't wait for today's race. We can't wait to see how you get on as well. If you are involved, of course. We have 15 drivers registered for qualifying. So maybe a few more joining in the race later on. Sarley's asking, who do I think will win? Uh, I think it's going to be either Cyclonada or WSP, to be honest with you. But talking of which of WSP... He missed last week's event in Canada, which means he's lost crucial ground in the title race. He's still 29 points behind, so it's easily doable for him to catch back up. But he needs to try and win this race to have any chance of doing so, ideally. Aaron Kerry looking to continue his brilliant start to the season. Victory last time out in Canada, which makes him the third different winner from four races. Cyclonado already has two victories to his name in Spain and Azerbaijan. We've got a couple of drivers on outlaps at the moment. Sali is one of them in the Renault. The other one is Denmark. Now, I want to go through um, some drivers, actually, who talk a little bit about themselves as, um, as players. So whilst we've been sort of mentioning them, time and time again on the on the grid in terms of how they're doing out on track we want to maybe get to know them a little bit more we just want to find Denmark's uh, bio and by the name of Denmark Johnson from Smyrny in the state of Tennessee 22 years old at home taking care of his family and saying that if he's a real life Formula 1 fan he said yes but not for long only for a few years started playing F1 when he had a PS, uh, PlayStation he was looking for racing games to play on and he stumbled across F1 2017 he didn't think it was a real sport to begin with but he looked up and he brought the 2018 game at the end of its cycle in 2019 when he started watching F1 fully and got hooked in his, uh, he's been hooked to it since the days of Alex Albon, who is his favourite driver. And he'll be... So yeah, so Alex Albon is his favourite driver after all. Now Sali, who was on the flying lap, has had his lap time invalidated for exceeding track limits. But Denmark is coming round complete his first flying lap we are expecting some short times here it's a one minute 5.0 for Denmark can set that time on the mediums as well Radicon's gone for a spin on the exit of turn four or in the middle of turn five I should say who else is on a flying lap at the moment Bishop's finger is on a flying lap is Janino Sali has just gone for another run but he's had his lap time invalidated for exceeding shot limits We'll go back to Bishop's finger. I'm just trying to get you know, his buyer off and just to find out a little bit more about him. 
doesn't seem as though we can find it at the moment, so maybe another time we will find out about it. But Bishy Swinger it crosses over the line, it's only 1 minute 17.3, so that's nowhere near representative for him. And we've got a Ferrari coming through, that's uh, SDQ. He's had his lap time in Validator, there's an Alfa Tari behind him, that's Juninho, and it's a 1 minute 3.8 that puts him to the top of the timing pages. Now here's Nanda, 25, in the Ferrari, posting a 1 minute 4.8. Goes two tenths faster than Denmark had posted a 1 minute 5.0. Tilwick posting a time of 1 minute 5.5. And we want to find a little bit more about uh, Tilwick actually. So going by the name of Travis Tilwick, who lives in Tampa in the state of Florida, I think it is. 39 years old. He works as a service manager for the Ford dealer. Loves all forms of motor racing and anything fast. Not much of a gamer until he found uh, sim racing. So Guilford going up to second place with a 1 minute 3.9. There have only been six drivers posting lap time so far. Binati Nata is one of them as well, the owner of the America F1 series. Perhaps want to get a little bit more information about the guy himself who runs this league. So Brent Natwick from Santa Clara in the state of California, almost 23 years of age. I think he turns 23 in like a day or so. He's currently a full-time college student at Menlo College in Atherton, California. He works on a bachelor's degree in business with a focus in sports management. Also a real-life Formula 1 fan. Since he was 15 years old, Sebastian Vettel is his favourite driver, but Haas is his favourite team since they are the only US Formula 1 team. Can't go wrong with that. Binatti Nata posting a 1 minute 4.7. It's a good lap time actually for Binatti Nata compared to what we've seen from him in previous rounds. There's still drivers who are exceeding track limits at the moment. Switchback is not going to be posting a time. One of those not posting a time in this session. This is almost like turning into a practice session for these guys. Let's have a look. Let's talk about SCQ 2005, shall we? Going by the name of Matthias Holguin from Quito in Ecuador, 16 years of age. He studies at school. He's been watching F1 since he was seven years of age. And he always has been watching it with his father or with his grandparents. And the reason why he's joined the America F1 series is because he wants to have a league from the American continent and not from Europe. Because in another three leagues he's involved with, that all of them are from Europe. So that's fair enough. Just EQ in the Ferrari. There's also a, an Alfa Romeo making his way out on the circuit. That'll be Elog. He nearly took victory in Azerbaijan. He took victory on the road until penalties were rescinded for other drivers, which saw him come out in third place in the end. But still, I think he's going to be in, within the frame of going for a victory at some point. Denmark has just started a, another flying lap. He did his earlier time on the mediums. Now he's looking to better that on the soft compound. And he comes in towards turn three. So Denmark is coming through into turn four. You see there was a Ferrari moving out of the way. That'll be... I think either Nanda or SCQ, it, it was Nanda who, who came through. Nearly nine tenths up from his previous best start for Denmark. He's definitely on course for a low one minute four, possibly a high one minute three, if he can find enough time in the last sector. DRS open, and it's a one minute 3.9, so good luck time that for Denmark. 
puts him second, less than a tenth away from Juninho's fastest lap time. Nanda's just started his flying lap. DRSP is completing his first, and this lap time of his puts him to provisional pole position by over a second ahead of his teammate Juninho. Cyclonado is next up. He's just had his lap time invalidated for exceeding track limits. Nanda is nearly three tons up from his previous best time. He's set on the mediums in sector one. And uh, one of his backed out of this lap, actually. I think he made a mistake somewhere. Because he was just waiting for his ERS to charge back up. And he's on his way again. So Wick is the next driver to cross over the line. To return 10. And it's going to be a 1 minute 5.1 which is a better time than before, by, uh, quicker by four tenths than what he had previously set. Puts him eighth fastest. Radicon is, is there. Aaron Carey is also on a flying lap, as is Sarley. But here's Carey. He's coming through. Turn 10 now. Takes as wide as a light as he can without exceeding track limits. He's posting his time on the mediums. It's a 1 minute 4.1. Next up is... Uh, I was going to say Cycle Nardo actually, but it's actually. It might be Gilfie who's just gone quicker actually. Well, he's gone up to second now, has Gilfie. Cycle Nardo has had his latest lap invalidated. Radicon goes up to fifth on a 1 minute 3.9. Going back to Gilfie actually, one of the newcomers who made his debut last time out in, um, in Canada, I believe. Let's find out a little bit more about him, shall we? So going by the name of Rafael Gilfi from Sao Paulo in Brazil, 20 years of age, and studying international relations at college. He's always watched F1 since he was a kid because of his grandfather and his brother. He also, because he likes Alonso's car, not sure which one he means. He only has, he only has been following F1 in the past few years. His favourite driver is Charles Leclerc, but he's also a McLaren fan. And the reason why he's joined the America F1 series is because he started league racing this year and he likes it so much that Vinatinata, or Brent that is, invited him to the league and he didn't hesitate to join him. We well, welcome you, Gilfie. And whilst we've been saying that, it's posted a better time than before. One minute 3.6, that keeps him second. Now Sarley, who's posted a good lap time of one minute 3.7. Once again, get a bit know, sorry, know a little bit more about the uh, the Swiss driver. So Lucas Sala, 16 years of age, from Bern in Switzerland. And he's works for an accident insurance company called Suva, and he plays hockey in his free time. And he is a real-life Formula 1 in almost half a year. He's a big fan of the young drivers, for example, Lando Norris, Charles Leclerc, George Russell. And his reason joining the America F1 series, he wants to have fun and race in the league. Welcome to the league as well, Sarley. Joined the back end of Season 1, putting some great performances as well. And Bishop's finger going for a spin on the exit of turn three. Now uh, we've noticed that Radicon has retired from the session, so he won't be improving on his lap times. And uh, T Mouse nineteen ninety nine just coming out saying only he not racing, not racing today. Only Division Two. Saying Division Two tomorrow. Well, the Division Two race was on Saturday night, which was yesterday. CQ, one of the one of three drivers in the session to not post the lap time yet. Going a bit too deep into turn four there. Will compromise his exit. 
So WSP fastest by nine tenths of a second with Gilfie in second place. Sali is third ahead of Nanda. Junior Kayeri in fifth position, in uh, fifth position, I should say. It's Denmark, Fisher's Finger, Radicon, and Aaron Carey, the, the, uh, the highest of the drivers who have set their fastest times on the mediums in ninth. SDQ coming back into the pits. You Notice his lap time has been invalidated. Inasinata has also had his latest lap invalidated. Elog also coming back into the pits. Here is Janino aiming for a better lap in the Alpha Tari. He's had his lap time invalidated as well, so he'll be making his way back into the pit lane. DSP likewise, he's just had his lap invalidated. Let's have a look at Elog actually, because he's someone who we've not spoken about. So going by the name of Gilherme Cardozo, or Guy, he's short for Gilherme, from uh, Carapica in Sao Paulo in Brazil, 16 years of age, he's at high school, he's finishing next year, he doesn't have a job yet, but he wants to get a job at some point. He started watching the season in 2020 because he started playing on the F1 2019 game and he liked it so much. He's watched all of the season of uh, last year in search of the good races in the past. He's a big fan of Lewis Hamilton as he's his favourite driver and not just his career in Formula 1 but because of his, because of his uh, probably the stuff he does off track as well. And Psychonado has gone second fastest on a 1 minute uh, 3.2 that puts him half a second away. So just going back to what I was saying about um, Elog, saying that um, the reason why he's joined the America F1 series is because his friend, Quasi Nada, who we've seen racing in this series in the past, invited him to race there. He said that the league is very good and has good drivers. He accepted the invite and came and he liked it very much. And he's, invited, he's liked it so much, he's invited three more friends into the F1 series, the America F1 series, and they liked it too. He does apologise if his English is not very good, but he's trying his best. Well... I have to say, with, for a Brazilian, at the age of 16, with that level of English and trying his best, I think that's very, very admirable. That um, you'll have a really, really good job with what you're doing at school. There's Aaron Carey is just moving out of the way of other drivers going past. Here's Denmark, who is on a better lap than before, nearly a 10 bop from his previous best in Sector 2. We've got one minute to go before qualifying ends. It's enough time to get around and get another lap in. So Denmark crosses the line, and it's a 1 minute 3.6. It's three tenths faster than before, and that puts him third on the second row. Giannino posting a 1 minute 3.8. I think he may have just started his last run, but he's overdone it at turn one, and that's his lap time over. Aaron Carey going for a last effort on the mediums. Didn't take the best line through turn one. There is Sali, who's on a flying lap in the Renault. He'll be looking to go in front of both his teammate and Gilfi into third place, but he's far away from doing that, and he's not going to have enough time to get round to the finish line to start another lap. There's WSP, who's on a flying lap at the moment. Aaron Curry coming round to sector two, nearly a tenth up from his best time at that part of the racetrack. So he's got a great opportunity to improve and put his Mercedes possibly ahead of his teammate and Bishop's finger. So coming around the last corner now. Where does this put Aaron Carey? He doesn't improve and stays 10th fastest for him. So WSP is on pole position. He wants to try and better his lap time. And it's a 1 minute 2.6. And that's the fastest time of the session. To put him further away from Cyclonado on the front row. So WSP on pole position for Alpha Tari with Cyclonado in second place. Thanks to Denmark ahead of Gilfie. Sali in fifth 
Nanda in sixth place. It's a good effort from him in the Ferrari. Juninho in seventh. Then it's Bishopsfinger, Radicon, Aaron Carey, Erlog, B. Natty Nasser, Tuick, SDQ and Switchback, who didn't set times. We may have a few more drivers joining the grid for the race. So we'll find out in a few moments' time. So qualifying is over, let's take a look at the grid. WSP on pole position ahead of Cyclonado alongside them. It's Denmark third and Gilfie alongside them on row two. Then it's Sarli and Nando on row three. Janinho and Bishopsfinger on row four. Radicon and Aaron Carey on row five. Elog and Binatanasa making up row six. Tilwick and SDQ on row seven, although Tilwick will go back two places on the grid with his uh, grid penalty. Not sure what that is for. SDQ will start 13th, then we'll switch back in 14th. And uh, Tilwick's grid penalty is for a collision with Switchback. Doesn't seem to be any other grid penalties for the drivers. So we now go on to the race. We'll find out who else is going to be joining for this 36 lap event. Doesn't appear to be any other drivers joining on the grid. I think it may just be the 15 who are starting. Although switchback. I'm just looking to see who. Four, five, six, seven. I'm saying there's only 14 drivers on the grid here. Not sure who is opted out of here. We'll find out in a moment who. That is. It might be Nanda actually. Oh no, Nanda's in there. My apologies. I'll find out when the formation map gets underway. And then we'll have a look to see what tyre compounds each driver will be starting on. So if you just joined us, we do welcome you. Do feel free to get involved in the conversation. I'm not sure what's happened here because we are taking quite a long time. So the connection has frozen at the moment, so it could well be that everyone will need to opt out of the lobby and come back in again, and then we'll have a custom, and then we'll have the grid sorted for the race. So just waiting for confirmation from B. Natanata, the owner of the league itself. Sal is just asking, is there a bug? There may well be, um, it may be a connection thing, um, Sally. Um, we're just waiting for confirmation from the owner as to what, what's the best thing to do at this stage. You have just joined us and expecting to see some racing. We do apologise. Just a rundown on the championship standings whilst we're waiting. Cycle Nardo has a 26 point lead over Aaron Kerry, who is second, with WSP, who is on pole, a further three points behind. 
and he has to go to Elog, who's a further 22 points adrift in fourth. So at the moment, you have to say it's Psychonado's championship to lose. I think the drivers have uh, have left the uh, the session. Yep, so I think we are going to be going back to the um, the lobby again to set the race up. We do apologise for the delay, guys, but sometimes it is what it is. We do our best to make sure you are filled in with the action that you want. So we do apologise for the delay guys uh, for the race. We did complete qualifying with WSP on pole position. Hopefully it won't be too long before the action does finally get underway. So just waiting for an invite from the owner to just get back into the um, into the lobby. And don't hesitate to get involved in the conversation as well, guys. Whilst we are waiting, keen to answer any questions you want me to discuss about. So Sal is asking, who would I think will win the season in real life? Um, Formula 1 season, well, it's, it's only between two drivers at the moment, but I still think that Lewis is going to be um, the one coming out on top. I mean, if you look at how the season's panned out so far, um, I would say that Lewis will have more luck on his side than Max will. And Lewis will always find a way to win. At whatever cost. So that's my take on them. Lewis on actually winning this championship will be his eighth title as well. And we've only done five races out of 23, so a lot can still change between now and um, December the 12th. Right, so we've got back into the lobby now, so we're just waiting for the owner to complete the grid of which qualifying was set. And then we'll begin the Austrian Grand Prix. This may be an opportunity for those who weren't participating in qualifying to actually get onto the grid for this one now. So that's 
something to uh, bear in mind. So I was saying I'm a bit on both sides. I think for stuff could win the season too. I could agree with you on that, but I just I think Lewis, in the long run, will find a way to um, to come out on top because I just think he's the more consistent driver than Max is. He doesn't necessarily need to win every single race. And he just needs to get the most points he can get, given the circumstances. And obviously, what happened in Monaco was um, was uh, you know it was an off day for Mercedes, to be honest with you. And the fact that Lewis can overtake in Monaco tells you everything you need to know. But on circuits like Baku, Paul Ricard, and of course the two races in Austria, we've got the Styrian Grand Prix and the Austrian Grand Prix at the same circuit, where Lewis will be able to bounce back from. And of course, there's the British Grand Prix. And we know how well Lewis does um, at that particular track. So I just I just think with the number of races and how prepared Lewis will be over the course of the season. You know, for each and every race that comes as it does, he'll be the one, you know, he's the one to beat. Whether he's the championship leader or not. We've got 14 of the drivers join now. We'll make that 15. Just looking to see if there's any other drivers who weren't involved in qualifying that could be involved in the race. You can see Quasi Nada join him because he didn't take part in qualifying. He'll start at the back of the grid. Solly now saying that I don't really care who wins. I care more about if Norris is able to finish in P3 in the championship. And if Danny Ricciardo can bring better races in the future. That's not a bad point. I mean, to be honest, I'm, I'm a neutral myself, considering that I'm a qualified journalist, um, a podcaster and presenter, as well as a commentator, of course. I'm not too bothered who actually wins, just as long as we can get some close racing in there. I think the misconception that people have is... They want to see a, a different driver winning all the time, but the priority for Formula One is it's not that that needs to change necessarily. It's the quality of the racing. That's the kind of advert Formula One should be putting on. You can have races where they are sort of typically standard, but have like a a different winner to normal actually winning. You can have I don't like to, I don't like to use the word boring because. There's nothing boring about Formula One. But if you're going to go down that road, you can have almost boring races, but an unpre unpredictable result. And you can also have great races with a more predictable result. Sorry, I nearly dropped my uh, controller there. <laughs> my apologies there. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to have mo like different winners, but the priority is to have the quality of the racing improve, hence why we're having these new cars um, next year, which is going to help the racing a lot. And the idea of it needs to be given time. So when we do have that first race um, next year or first few races, don't draw into conclusions saying, oh, the whole idea is, you know, not very good or whatever you want to say in that. You need to give it time. It needs to be given a few years before it um, before you choose to draw into conclusions on it. And of course it's Baku next weekend, which could prove to be one of the craziest races of the season. I mean, it could be similar to what it was in 2019, the last race of Formula 1 going in there, where it was just typically standard, one-stop race. But I hope we get some close racing. It's what Formula 1 needs.
Soli now coming in saying, I think Baku could be a truck where Ricardo can finally get to near the car. Well, true, but I just think the thing is with Baku, there's a lot of corners that are more like kinks rather than they are like genuine turns. I don't know if that's the kind of corners that Ricardo likes. I know he's won there in 2017, but that came at the expense of Sebastian Vettel getting a stop and go and Hamilton's headrest came uh, coming loose. That, for me, was what handed Ricardo the victory. We'll start to see drivers getting ready now. So we'll be going to the grid for the formation that will, will commence. So we have 16 drivers on the grid for this Austrian Grand Prix, round five of the America F1 series in the Division One category. Same thing, we're going to get repeats of the the bug that we had last time, which saw the race delayed. Less than 30 seconds away from the start of the formation lap. And this is an opportunity to find out who is starting on whatever tyres. So on the way now for the formation lap. Now this is an opportunity to find out who is starting on whatever tyres. Let's take a look. So the only drivers starting on the mediums are Elog, SDQ and Switchback. All the others are starting on the softs. WSP leading the field around the formation lap. It won't be too long before this race gets on the way. With the Brazilian on pole position. Now WSP needs a strong result here after missing Canada last week to keep his hopes in the championship alive. As we are approaching the halfway point of the season. They're all making their way around to the grid now. WSP on pole position, Cyclonado. Sottens to second, and it's Denmark. Gilfie, a brilliant four for him. Sally and Nando on row two, on row three, sorry. What can the likes of Radicon, Aaron Kerry, Elog, and those do from the mid part of the field? 
Waiting for those five red lights to come on, which they do now when they go out. It's racing in Austria at the Rebel Ring. It's lights out and away we go. And WSP gets off to a shocker of a start. Psychonado gets in front. So he's going to lead into turn one. Gilvy gets up into second place. Sali third. Then it's Nanda. WSP down to fifth place. Then it's Janinho. Bishop's Finger. Denmark. Who's also got away very, very poorly. And it's Karen Curry who's alongside of him to go up into eighth place. And it's the second Mercedes of Radicon completing the top ten. Coming into turn three for the first time. There's a bit of argy barge as the Williams, the Mercedes and the Renault go side by side as they exit. But it's the Williams who gets in front of them, which is Bishop's Finger. Janinho in sixth place with Nanda. Losing the position to WSP. WSP making his way back through the field. Up into fourth position now. Sully in third for Renault behind Gilfie. So Cyclonado getting the start he needed to get in front. And WSP had the worst start that he could have possibly have had, if I'm honest with you. And now he's got a lot of ground to make up in fourth place. So riding on board with him. In front of him is Sully. Maybe we'll see the DRS as it's not enabled until the end of lap two. So coming around the start finish straight now. There is WSP looking to make a move on Sali. Further behind there's a, an overtake between what looks like uh, Denmark has dropped down to 15th place. Elog not getting the best of starts either. In fact, I think Denmark must have had a moment somewhere either at turn three or something. But after a good qualifying from him, he's way down the field. And the switchback getting past well, it looks like SEQ for 11th place. Psychonado, two and a half seconds clear. The WSP now up to third past Sali. And now he's looking to go past Gilfi into second and go after race leader Psychonado. Going through turns 9 and 10. Aaron Curry getting the first time penalty of the race. Three seconds it is for exceeding track limits too many times. Now can WSP use the DRS to his advantage? DRS is now enabled. Hence why WSP has that utility to pull alongside Gilfi to go up into second position. As they come up to turn 3 otherwise known as the Remus Curve. Nanda also getting past N uh, Zali into fourth position. So good move there from Nanda, who's doing well on his debut weekend in the America F1 series. Bishop's Finger in eighth place behind Aaron Kerry. Kerry making up for lost time. Bishop's Finger also has a time penalty to his name. As Elog going side by side with switchback over a lowly 11th place. We would really expect both of them to be in the mix for race victory but they could do later on once the pit stops do get underway Doris Pete looking to make up ground on Cycle Nada now as he's into P2 and he fight his way back to the front and get past Cycle Nada for the lead very much possible to do so there is Nanda in fourth position behind Gilfie who occupies third position can Nanda Continue his great start and get past the McLaren. DRS open. Thought about a move, but has to slot back in inside. Sally right behind Janinho as well. Aaron Curry still ahead of Bishop's Finger. With Radicon in 10th place. And we've got the battle of the Alfa Romeo. So as Elog goes side by side with his teammate Quasi Nada. Elog pulls out of the slipstream. Goes to the inside. And goes past his teammate off into 10th place. Switchback needs to get in on the action here, as does Denmark. They've both had shocker of uh, race starts. He needs to try and get back into the action. Psychonado still leads. SDQ, the latest driver to get a time penalty now. And I've gone into in sets of three. Not sure who has had a moment. It's Janinho. Janinho has gone off at the last turn. And he's got to be careful not to reset the car back onto the track at this point. That's a real shame for Janinho because he was running in sixth place before he had that spin. He's got going again though. Oh dear me. That's not good driving for Janinho. Just too desperate. 
too, too desperate. He needs to reverse it, dude. Can he get going again? He can. But he's way down the field. He's at the back now. A switchback gets past uh, Quasinada for uh, 10th place. Oh, they nearly banged wheels there. And Quasinada manages to get back through on the racing point. We've got a mover as well because Aaron Kerry and Bishop's fingers are tossing with each other with uh, Radicon as well. Aaron Kerry up to 6th place now courtesy of Janino's spin. And here's Sali in 5th. Behind Nanda and Gilfi. Sally going way, going far too wide there. I'm sure he, he'll have picked up a warning for that. And Cyclonado's now got a time penalty. Cyclonado's now got a three second time penalty for exceeding track limits. Doris P close behind. With Nanda clo closing in on Gilfi in the battle for third place. Oh, I thought he was going to run into the back of him there as they approach the Remus curve. And Nanda keeps, keeps it clean. Then switch back game. Paul Dry coming out of turn three. And that's going to allow Quasi. Oh, we've got a spinner! The Ferrari's in the barriers. That's SDQ. Now, I'm not sure if he's had a tangle with someone. But he's facing almost the wrong way. Gets the car reverse. Please don't reset the car back onto the track, mate. He's got going again. And he'll rejoin well ahead of Janino, who's in the pits, actually. So Psychonalo puts a lap on Janino as he goes on to lap seven. Darius P in second place. Gilfie in third. Who should go past the Avatari, who comes out of the pits now. So we're also getting a time penalty. But Nanda within DRS range, very much within striking distance. Goes to the outside. Surely he must have the better line as he exits turn three here. And Nanda goes through. So Nanda gets past Gilfi into third place. And someone else is coming into the pit lane. Is that SDQ is coming in? Yeah, it is. Uh, SDQ in the pits going way too quick. Way, 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 way too quick for his liking. And he's got a time penalty as well. And he's out of the race. So... SDQ calling here today, the first driver to retire from this race. We had a battle going on further behind, actually, as I think um, Aaron Kerry has got ahead of... Uh, I thought he got ahead of Sally for a moment there, but it didn't look like he did. But they're closing in, actually, now on Gilfi, who occupies third position ahead of Nanda. Now, can Nanda get by the McLaren and go up to third place? There is an Alvatari who... Is a lap down on these guys. That's uh, Giannino. He'll be desperate to unlap himself on these guys. Denmark getting past Quasinada into 11th. Radicon now overtaking uh, Bishop's finger. Radicon fifth place in the driver's standings. He's got a third, a fifth, and a sixth, a lot, as well as a non-finish to his name. In terms of racecraft, he's doing a fine job so far. Whilst the battle for the lead, maybe a two-way fight between Cyclonada and WSP, the battle for the final podium spot. is hotting up between Gilfi, Nanda, Sali, and Aaron Carey. Coming through turn nine now, Nanda looking to... Get past Gilfie. Will he use DRS? The answer is yes. They're able to get the job done into turn one. She needs to be wary of Janinho, who is ghosted because he's a lap behind these guys. None that with DRS going to the outside, doing a similar move to what Gilfie did earlier on. Oh, and Janino spun. Janino has spun on the exit of turn three. Now, did he carry on as he did? But we want to go back to the battle for third place as Gilfie goes down the inside of Nanda to keep hold of that position. And he's done it there. So that's him up to third place still, or remaining in third place. And Janino has picked up damage off that spin. The 
Oh, Mante is coming round now. And there's an instant set to two. It's one of the Hasses has gone for a spin. It's B Natty Natter. What a shame. He could have been in the fight for points as well. And we've got a change of position as Elog goes down the inside of Bishop's Finger into turn one they go. And Elog gets eighth place. That's a very nice move there from Elog, who is the highest of those on the medium tyres. And with the soft tyres falling away, those on the mediums are very much coming into their window. Sarli going side by side with Aaron Carey. Carey pulling off a brilliant move as they enter turn four now. So the Mercedes goes up into fifth position. Nanda's still behind Gilfie. I wonder how long it'll be before the leaders start coming in for a change of tyres. Now Radicon going wide on the exit of turn seven. Now Radicon looking to keep hold of seventh place at the moment, even though his tyres are falling away at this point. going to the inside of Radicon to put his Alfa Romeo up into 7th place. So it's a nice move there from the Alfa Romeo driver, although having said that, Aaron Carey, or Radicon sorry, is going to have DRS for the run down to turn 4, but the Alfa Romeo has it covered and keeps hold of that place. Nanda's still behind Gilfie in the battle for third place. Come around to complete lap 11 and go on to lap 12 now, these guys. Vicious Finger still ahead of Switchback. Denmark now in the pits. Looking to perhaps complete an undercut on a lot of those ahead of him. He'll rejoin ahead of B Natty Natter. He's needing a new front wing as well. So Denmark out on his way. He's got he's hoping for a safety car as well, I imagine. So Darius P still chasing Psychonado for the lead. Nanda Nell ahead of uh, Gilfi for third. Aaron Curry next up behind. Sarley in sixth position. Elog in seventh. He's one of only five drivers now who doesn't have a time to answer to his name. And Sully spun. Sully has spun it on the exit of turn nine. And he's bows his chances of a podium all the way now, I would think. At least he didn't have far to go to get into the pit lane. And that certainly won't have helped his cause. So he's into the pits for a new front wing. Quasinada getting ahead of uh, Sarli as a result of that. And Bishop's Finger losing a position to uh, switch back. And um, Aaron Carey now ahead of Gilfie for fourth place. So Aaron Carey having a fine race so far. Second in the championship. How long before the leaders choose to come in for their tight, for their uh, one and only stops? Not so yet. I think with the pace they're setting in comparison to those behind, they want to stay out there for as long as they can. They may even wait until those behind actually start pitting. Carry. We'll have DRS to close in on Nanda. Oh, no. 
Dan Sawley letting Denmark through. Denmark showing faster pace at this moment of time than his teammate. So Sally decides not to fight with him. Cycling on out, the first of leaders to pit then for a scheduled stop. WSP goes into the lead. Now, is anyone else choosing to duck into the pits? Aaron Kerry is. Saikonala rejoins behind Elog, who is on all the mediums and the Williamses. So how long will it be until WSP decides to make his way into the pit lane? We've got Aaron Kerry who's come in, rejoins in 8th, Radicon in 10th, Quasinada also in for Alfa Romeo. He will rejoin behind Denmark and Sali. Cyclone are now ahead of Elog, doing it through turn four. He's got Gilfie ahead, here he's on older tyres ahead on the soft compound, there he is. You can tell by the way he's sliding. WSP into the pits then for Alpha Tari. This is not going to be enough for him to take the lead. Well, it is going to be enough to take the lead actually. Well, it may not be actually, I'm probably just thinking of it the other way around, but Cyclonada is going to go back into the lead with WSP in second place. Elog going ahead into second on the road anyway, who is yet to stop. WSP rejoins in third ahead of Switchback, who has yet to make his only stop of the race. Vicious Finger in fifth. Nanda being overtaken by Aaron Kerry has done an undercut on him to get his Mercedes off to sixth on the road which will become third once everyone else has made the starting phase completing an undercut on Gilfi actually so Aaron Kerry now up into the podium places effectively at this point he's on the hard tyres which won't be as quick at this point but he will have better pace than the leaders come the end of the race he's got some clear track ahead of him and I suppose the good news for him is that Saikonala has been given another three seconds worth of time penalty so as WSP can stay within six seconds of Psychonado, he would take victory here in Austria. Vicious finger now in the pits for Williams. Now Nanda getting, almost getting a move done on Aaron Kerry coming out of turn three as WSP goes past Elog up into second place now. So with the Alfa Romeo who's yet to stop out of the way. WSP can now just thinking about just stay within six seconds of Psychonado between now and the end of this race. And as far as the championship is concerned, with WSP setting the fastest up of the race and taking victory, that would see Psychonado's gap being... That would see Psychonado's lead drop down to 21 points. Now, Aaron Carey, what penalty has he got at the moment? It's three seconds for, for Carey. So if, if Carey can get to within three seconds of... Psychonado by the end of this race, he would take second, but he's got a lot of ground to make up and he's got Nanda to watch out as well. This is on better tyres at this point than, than Kerry is. There's Bishop's finger in ninth. And they're looking to get ahead of Carey into effectively third place. 
Switch back is into the pits now for his only stop at the end of lap 18. Let's go on to what is probably going to be the soft tyres, although it's very early to be going for the softs. Yeah, he's going for a set of soft tyres, so I'm not sure he's going to be able to get to the end of the race on those soft tyres, if I'm honest with you. He's going to have to hope for a safety car or something. Nanda getting a three-second time penalty for exceeding shot limits. So switchback comes back out onto the circuit ahead of Radicon in seventh place. Aaron Cherry fending off Nanda as well. The two going side by side. So Nanda going to the outside. Breaks later than the Mercedes. And that's the Ferrari through, I think. And Kerry not giving up by any stretch. Going to the outside, but Nanda's got the better line and he's through into fourth position. Elog now in the pits for Alfa Romeo. Getting the car set down just in time, actually, as well. Nanda and Kerry will go through. Gilfie will probably go through as well. He might get in front of Switchback, because Switch was behind um, Elog when he came in. And Switchback is coming down the start finish straight, but I think Elog's done enough to stay ahead of him. Our Switchback will have tyres that are more up to temperature than the Alfa Romeo. This is the battle for sixth position now. Although the bad news for Switchback is that he's got a time penalty to his name that is nine seconds worth. Elog does not have a time penalty at all. And Ella won't want to be locking up those softs too off, uh, too much. He needs to get to the end of the race on those as well, remember. Kerry doesn't need to worry too much about tyre management. He's on the hard tyres who have done four laps. He's got an opportunity to get by. Oh, and someone's gone for a spin. That'll be one of the Renaults. That's Denmark who's gone off. quasinado has gone off as well. So not sure if those two have had a tangle, but Denmark has broken his front wing. Now, has Quasimodo broken his front wing as well? No, he hasn't. I think he's just got away with it. So Denmark will be coming back into the pit lane to get a new front wing fitted. Now, Tilwick will go past him into 12th place. Tilwick has been on a good run of form at late, actually. He's been in the points a couple of times. I think he's been ninth on both occasions. But Denmark is now back in the pits. It's the second time he's been in. He may try and go for the fastest lap. Or he'll just decide to call it quits. Denmark has retired from the session now. He's clearly had enough. And so his race is over. Saipanado. Continuing on his way. He's leading on the road. But with his six second time penalty. That would see him drop to second behind WSP. Now here's Elog in sixth position, closing in on Gilfi. And Elog goes through as they cross over the line. And I think Switchback will follow suit as well. So Gilfi staying over to the left and Switchback goes through. So Gilfi believes... Oh, and Elog goes wide. Elog has run wide at turn one and Switchback makes it through up into fifth place. So I think Gilfi's going to get back through as well because of the... Loss of momentum on the um, Alfa Romeo. So Elog's hard work there has all come to nothing. So switchback on a charge at the moment. It's had a very mediocre start to the season, it has to be said, for switchback, given where he had finished last season in the championship. Now switchback won at the Red Bull Ring last season when he was a Alfa Romeo driver. And there's looking for probably not a podium finish given the time points he's got. And maybe looking at finishing 7th or higher. Now Gilfi lets Elog through. Gilfi not really fighting it on that one. Aaron Carey's now got another 3 seconds worth of time points added. That takes his total to 6. He's got a Ferrari of Nanda in the way. 
and that these two are 20 seconds off WSP. None that goes wide at turn three. Aaron Carey looking to take advantage. He will have the DRS. He can get into the slipstream. I think his attempt to have a go down into turn four is going to elude him, so he'll have to wait a little bit longer. Switch back. Closing on those, those two as well as his Elog. How long will it be before those two come into play and have a go on Nanda and um, Carey? One and a half seconds is the gap now between Carey and Switchback. Now Carey's got a little bit more EOS that he can use to try and get in front of Nanda. He needs a good exit out of turn one to get the job done. This exit was okay, not the best. But he may do enough to get back ahead of Nanda. As they go into turn three, down the inside he goes with DRS. Nanda locks up a little bit. They're still side by side, but Kerry's still going to have DRS. And an opportunity to get back into the slipstream. And have a go down into turn four. To the inside he goes. To nearly banging wheels as well. Kerry, oh, the bang wheels again. Kerry nearly getting the job done there. Oh, they nearly came together as well. But it was very marginal between Nanda and Kerry. And this fight is allowing Switchback and Elog to close in. I think that's uh, Switchback and Elog having their own battle. So we've got two battles going on in close, uh, in close sympathy. Harry now coming on to the start from straight. He's got DRS again. Elog thought about going to the inside of Switchback as they go through turn one. And only getting another time penalty for uh, exceeding track limits too many times. Let's have a look at the penalties because this is an important part of the race now to have a look at them. So, DSP would most certainly take the victory. Psychonaut is second. Oh, Aaron Curry going for it into turn four. Oh, the tangle. They came together. There was contact. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not good driving that from Nanda. And Curry's reset back onto the track. That's a penalty coming in his way for sure. Not good driving that from Nanda, but Carey should not have reset the car back onto the track. That's a slam dunk penalty, I'm afraid. And I think Nanda has to take responsibility for the collision. And I think Carey's going to need to come in to get that nose changed as well. Elliot's got a time penalty to his name now. Well, a three seconds worth of time penalty. He's behind switchback. And uh, Kerry into the pits for Mercedes. And he needs a new front wing as well. That allows Bishop's finger and Sarley to go through. And that will be Kerry down to 10th place by the time he rejoins. Now Elog looking to get past Switchback. Barcinada getting past Kerry as well as Kerry exits the pit, so Kerry down to 11th place. Oh, and Elog and Switchback nearly coming together there. He nearly ended in tears as well. Switchback in fourth now. Will be all over of the, the back of the Ferrari of Nanda. So as they come into turn one now, the battle for third rages on. I just hope Nanda doesn't behave in the same way as he did with Carey. Oh, there's a coming together between Switchback and Elog. Switchback failing to see Elog in time, and they come together on the exit of turn three. Gilfy gets through. And it won't be too long before Radicon closes in on these guys. But they're coming together as they're guilty to go up into fourth place. 
a very bizarre incident. Switchback wasn't aware that Elog was within a car's length. Now, if I was to point the blame at any of those two, it's probably going to be Switchback for not leaving Elog enough space on the inside on the exit. I think the stewards are going to be rather busy post-race with everything that's happened. Kerry's got past Quasinada and up into 10th place now, so he's back in the points. I suppose with him on fresher tyres, he's got the opportunity to go for the fastest lap. But yeah, it's a bit a strange incident that between Elog and Switchback. And Elog in the pits now for a new front wing. And Switchback carrying on as well. This is probably going to put Elog out of the points. Elog out on his way. As the Mercedes coming down, that'll be Carey. He'll go past him. And Carey goes back up to ninth. Looking set about going after his next driver. So here's Cyclonado on lap 29, eight laps to go. Still leading on the road, but WSP would take the victory, which would see Cyclonado's lead cut down to 19 points in the championship. WSP would go up to second with Kerry's lowly position at the moment. And Elog would most certainly not go up the, the order. I think Radicon, with where he is, with his time penalty, he should go up to fifth in this race. Therefore, 10 points for him would move him up to fourth in the driver's standings. Denmark not finishing. Piotr Jackson not racing today. Stoke Bloke is out of the America F1 series for good now as well. Gamer James not racing either. Drivers who haven't scored points this season. Bishop's Fingers yet to score. Currently occupies seventh place at the moment. He's had a decent race actually as uh, Bishop's Finger. And now we're about to see. Now Switchback has come away without damage to his racing point. The highest finish he's had this season has been seventh at the opening round in Bahrain. Of course, for a fifth place finish here. Although, having said that, he is on soft tyres to Radicon, who's on the mediums. Now, if Radicon could get to within six seconds of switchback, he'd go up to fifth. Aaron Kerry getting another three second time penalty to add to his frustration. Now, see him fall behind Elog. He's going to be all over the back of him now. These two have only just recently pitted. Following collisions, Elog now setting a new fastest up, and someone's on it off in sector two. It's switchback. Switchback has spun, and that's going to hand sixth place to uh, Radicon when he pulls alongside. Keep it clean, boys. Switchback protects his position. It looks though that Switchback has come away without damage. And that most certainly would put Radicon up into fifth place now with the penalties applied. Here's Gilfie. No time penalties to his name. Only one of two drivers who doesn't have a time penalty to his name. WSP is the other one. Now with the time penalties as they are, he wouldn't go up to the podium, but I'd imagine that Nanda's collision with Aaron Carey will be looked at by the stewards because... I do feel that Nanda's manoeuvre was rather reckless, if I'm honest with you. Elog goes up, well, Elog has already passed uh, Aaron Kerry to go up to ninth, and he's posting a new fastest lap as well, so that's a championship point going to him. Kerry looking to close in behind these guys. Elog. His next man is Sali, who's on the hard compound tyres. The 
This is the closest buckle we've got on, on track at the moment. Now we're going to be seeing a change of position as it stands. A log would finish ahead of Sarli, but he'll want to try and move up and go after Bishop's finger. To the inside he goes with DRS. Sarli needs to leave enough space, which he does so. A log's going to go to the inside. Can he break later than the Renault? He gets his nose in front initially. It's really now a log is going to be within striking distance to have a go down into turn four. He'll need to catch him by surprise if he's going to do it he decides to back out of it Bishop's finger has got another time pounds to his name now which will favour Elog a lot actually well, Elog has got Carey to watch out for as they go side by side into six can Elog get by the Renault of Sarli and go up into eight the answer is no get past Sarli and go up into 8th place? The answer is no. So I think he may get it done on this occasion. As they go side by side up towards the Remus curve and that's a change of position. Oh and this could be coming together. I think Sarli has broken his front wing as he came together with Aaron Carey. So Sarli, his race going, uh, going from bad to worse, gets by Elog again. And I'm sure that Sarli must have come together with um, Aaron Carey as they get, went up the Remus curve. That's a very strange incident that Bishop's finger under pressure now from Carey. Whilst Elog has already got past Sarli to go up into ninth place. Will Sarli come into the pits to get a, another set of tyres on? He's coming into the pits. Now will he decide to call it quits? Or will he go for the fastest lap? He might just call it quits, to be honest with you. We're going back to the battle between Kerry, who has now got past Bishop's finger to put himself up into seventh place. Elog is about to follow through as well. With three laps remaining here. Oh, Bishop's finger spun. Oh, there's contact. So Bishop's finger loses it. And he's got to be careful not to reset the car back onto the track. Aaron Carey's already under investigation for that as well. Bishop's finger is on his way again. You can see the race leaders. There's WSP who's now ahead of Cyclonado, who has just pitted for a set of the soft tyres. He must be trying to go for the fastest up, I should think. So WSP now into the lead on the road. And on course to take what would be his second victory of the season. His first since the opening round in Bahrain. Switch back in another time penalty of 12. That takes the total to 12. So the leader's just got one more lap to go now before this race is done. We're now on the final lap of this Austrian Grand Prix. It's been fairly straightforward, to be quite honest with you. Fairly straightforward. Well, I say it's been fairly straightforward with WSP. He made up for that awful, awful getaway at the lights. To fall down to fifth place by turn three, or by turn one. And then work his way back up. Get into the lead, courtesy of Psychonado's time penalty. But he's done everything right since then. And it will see... WSP closed down the gap to Psychonado. It will be 22 points as it stands. Here he comes then on the last lap through turns six. Just four more corners to go. Elog's got another three seconds worth of time penalty added. And so within three seconds of Aaron Curry to move up into seventh place. We'll find out in a moment. Here's WSP coming through the last couple of corners now. 
He was absent last weekend due to unknown circumstances. But coming through the last corner now, Darius P wins the Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring to close down the gap at the top of the championship. Cyclonado, does he get the fastest up on the final lap? Let's take a look. The answer is yes, he does. So not only does Cyclonado get second place, but also a championship point, which means the gap at the top is now down to actually 23 points, not 22, which could come crucial come the final race of the season in Austin. Nanda coming home in third place on debut. But I'm sure that collision between him, him and Aaron Carey will most certainly be looked at. Gilfi coming home in a brilliant fourth place for McLaren. Switchback crossing the line in fifth place, but that is going to go to Radicom. He will cross the line. Who's behind him? Aaron Carey will be behind Switchback. Elog moves up to seventh place, so Switchback will be sixth. Aaron Carey in eighth. Bishop's Finger, the last driver on the lead lap in ninth place. Sully taking the final point in tenth place in the Renault. But it's victory for WSP at the Rebel Ring. See the drivers coming out onto the podium now. There's WSP on the podium. Maybe cycle rival cycle Nardo and Xander coming onto the podium in the uh, Ferrari. So 23 points is the gap going into the next round at Silverstone in a week's time. So Final classification of the Austrian Grand Prix. WSP, the race winner, Cycle Nardo in second and getting the fastest lap points. And uh, Nanda is third. Gilfie, fourth. Radicon, fifth. Swishback in sixth. Elug, seventh. Aaron Kerry in eighth. Bishop's Finger in ninth. And Sali running at the top ten for Renault. Quasi Nardo was 11, followed by Tilwick. Binatanata and Janino never recovered after that coming together on in the uh, opening stages of the race. Denmark and STQ were the only drivers to not finish the race. Don't think there were any other important penalties that we need to discuss about. All these results are unofficial at the moment. There could well be penalties either rescinded or dissed out to drivers post-race. And then we'll find out soon enough have an updated driver's standings in the next few days. So that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. The next round of the championship will be at Silverstone for the British Grand Prix in a week's time on the 6th of June. 9.30 p.m. British summer time. I'm Tom Cairns, and I'll speak to you again soon when the America F1 series returns.